Well, it's good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning. I'm able to, I mean, I'm glad that I'm able enough to uh, read some scripture and make some comments this morning. And I won't uh, promise you anything that I say, well, you had not heard about it. Uh, but I will say this, what I'm reading and what I'm telling you this morning, if you'll, if you'll pay attention to it, you'll have a great rejoicing in it because what I'm going to talk to you about this morning is what God has done for two, three thousand, five thousand, six thousand years. Amen. As, as the times roll, He has blessed, He has blessed, and He has blessed. Mm -hmm. And so this is what I want to talk to you about. If you would, turn your Bibles to the book of Genesis. Nine chapter 9 verse 8 and like I say you uh, you heard this but it'll bless you if you think upon it and look at it a little closer but in chapter 9 of the book of Genesis and God spake unto Noah and to his sons with him saying and I be behold I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you and with every living creature that is with you of the fowls of the cattle and of the every beast of the earth with, with you from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth now we see here that this is uh, during the flood uh, God <laughs> flooded the earth because of sin and God takes care of those that are His. And mm -hmm. this, this proves to us this morning, even with these eight souls that were on the ark, how that He provided for them, how that He uh, took care of them, and how He gave them a safe landing, and all the, all the uh, things that they had to endure, he took care of them. Mm -hmm. And so he said, I will, in verse 11, I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the water of a flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the token. Now this is what I want to talk to you a little bit about this morning is a token. A token is a promise. It's a covenant. It's a gift. And these are some of the ways that you can explain the token. But God says, I'm going to give you this token. I'm going to, I'm promising you this. And you've heard a lot of, I'm, I'm sure in your lifetime, you've heard about people giving other people tokens of love and tokens of fellowship and tokens of remembrance and all that. Well, it's just a piece of metal or uh, whatever, and they, they give it to them uh, and to remember them by. And so it's a token. And here God is saying to these, uh, these uh, on the a ship here, uh, that this is a covenant of which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for a perpetual generation. Now, so when when we get into this thing of flooding and uh, gets high and it runs under the house and over the house, listen, we can rejoice in, in this, that God made a promise Amen. that he'd never do this, this thing again. And the reason that, that he did this was because of the sins of the world. They had got so wicked mm -hmm. that they would not listen to him. They wouldn't even listen to Noah. And he 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 worked on this ark for several years. And I've, I've heard uh, people say it wasn't 100, it was 60 or whatever. But listen, if it was 40 days, it was a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. And Noah, according to what I understand, he worked on it for a hundred years. And during that time, he 
come to the people and he preached to them and he told them that this was coming. And today, the same thing is involved with our country. People are doing things, it's ungodly to the to the point that I don't see how that God stands it anyway. Mm -hmm. But they're doing every ungodly thing. It's against right. God's word. And he is patient. He is patient. And he asks us to have patience and to wait upon him. And so he is very patient. And so here we see that this is one of the things that we can rejoice in. Is this covenant word that he made with the uh, with all of them and uh, here in verse 15 or, or number 14 and it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bowl shall be seen of a uh, scene in the clouds Amen. again this morning what a what a very special thing it is and so many times we look at it and say, oh, that's pretty. But we don't think about the promises that's behind this rainbow that we see a lot of times after a rain and how that God is speaking to us and he's saying to us, remember my covenant, remember Amen. my token. I made this token to you and I put this bowl in the air that it's my reminder to you that it'll never happen again. Amen. And it's the same way, you know, uh, with all of God's promises. He don't break one of them. He keeps them all. Amen. And so here we see here, he says here, and I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh that the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bowl shall be in the clouds and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And so God says this, I'm gonna put it up there to remind me, <laughs> to remind me, but the thing of it is this morning, we need to let it remind us Amen. that this this went on and it was very very uh uh awful for all of those people because uh at the on the when the doors were shut they were there pounding on the door they knew it was coming then it started raining they were pounding on the door but it's too late mm -hmm. it's too late and the thing that i i think of so much is a person sitting in church and listening to God's word proclaim, and the, the teacher or the pastor teaching about a, a damned soul, where it will go, and they're in the same boat as these people that were standing out there beating on that Noah's mm -hmm. door, because one day it's gonna happen, and one day the Lord Jesus Christ is gonna come back, and he's going to say, come up here. Mm -hmm. And all that are not ready, they're going to stay back here on this earth. And listen, this time, he said, I'll never, I'll never flood the earth no more. But this time when he comes, he's going to destroy it with fire. Yeah, and, and, and so what a terrible, and listen, it may not be a flame like it burns you. I, I, I don't know, I was thinking about this this morning. But this, this fire is kindled in the hearts of those that don't know the Lord. And the things that they're doing is a fire and it's going to burn them. Mm -hmm. It's going to burn them to the point where that they'll have every kind of disease and everything in this world is wrong with them. And, and be wars and rumors of wars, what the Bible says. And so there won't be no peace. And so we'll be gone but they're going to be down here for, for a long time. And then one day we'll come back to a new earth. Mm -hmm. So this is, this, this is the thing. And then look at verse uh, 17. <clears throat> and God said unto Noah, this is the token of the covenant which I have established 
between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. Uh, and so he wanted Noah to understand this really good. And so he uh, told him again. Now I want to go this morning to after we see what a great thing this was that that God did for uh, for Noah and them. But I want I want to read you something this morning in Exodus. If you would turn the Bible to Exodus 6, 10, I believe it is. I, 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 yeah, 16, verse 1. And these are the same people, the same people that did this thing to, to uh, not listen to Noah and that were just involved in everything in this world. These same people God blessed and let them reproduce and now they are called the Jews, his people. But listen, here's what they did. When he put them down in Egypt and they were down there for uh, years and years and years, listen, they finally got a savior, a leader, that would lead them out, and they'd been asking the Lord for one, and it was the man named Moses. Mm -hmm. And so here in verse 16, 1, he has, lead, he has led them out of Egypt, and he says, and they took their journey from Elm, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came into the, into the wilderness of Sin, mm -hmm. which is between Elm and Sinai on the 15th day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. Now, murmuring is something that will aggravate you to death. Mm -hmm. If you have people murmuring against you and you're trying to help them, you can imagine what was going on in Moses' life. And Moses, Moses messed up, even not here, but later on, Moses messed up with all this aggravation and all. God told Moses when they needed some water, said, you go down there and strike that rock, that rock. And he said, and he went down there and struck it and the water gushed out. And then again, in another time there, they were murmuring about the same thing. And she, he said, you go speak to the rock, Moses. Mm -hmm. And Moses was so aggravated with these people that he went down there with anger and smoked that rock twice mm -hmm. and disobeyed God. And he kept him from going over to Glen Canaan. Mm -hmm. And so we see here uh, the things that are going on in our life, we need to really, uh, really and truly, we need to be patient with the people that are uh, hollering and, and, and doing all this at us and realize that God is on the throne and God will take care of their Amen. there and he'll, he'll help you too if you'll just have a little patience. And so these are some of the things this morning that uh, I think will help you if you can try to do them. But anyway, we will see again back in uh, uh, Exodus 16 uh, uh, and in verse 2. And the whole congregation of children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the, land, by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. When we sit by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to the full, for ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill the whole assembly with hunger. And if you if you want to do a little study, go back and when they were uh, before they left, and um, Moses was there, and uh, he told the, the uh, ruler there, he said, you need to let my people go. Mm -hmm. And so all the people were, were happy and rejoicing when they started leaving and they even to the, went to the point of borrowing gold and silver and jewels from the Egyptians and they gladly gave it to them. This is mm -hmm. how much 
This is how much God blessed that journey into the wilderness. But you see here, after they got there, and it wasn't but around 40, 45 days, and of course, I don't know how long they'd done without water or, or food, but the thing of it is, uh, they needed to listen to Moses because they didn't need it. But he says here uh, uh, in verse, uh, let me see, uh, verse 3, and the children, and the children of Israel said unto them, Would you go? And then I read that. And when, uh, and in verse 4, then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day that I may prove them. Now notice he may prove them whether they will walk in my law or not. And so he told them now, I'm going to fix you all the bread you need out there. But you just go out there and get just what you need. And I also, he, in verse 5, and it came and it shall come to pass on the sixth day, they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Now, Moses told them, God told Moses, don't get more than you need. Mm -hmm. Because if you bring it in and don't eat it and lay it up, the worms and all will be on it and, mm -hmm. and it'll be learned. But here he gave them a two-day supply and they, they did what he said and so they made it fine. And that's, that's something this morning that we can, we can take to, uh, heed to that when we obey God, regardless mm -hmm. of how silly or how uh, it, 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 it listen, it, it hears, or how it, how it is, we need to obey this law. We need to obey, obey the God's word when it says for us to have faith and, and, and to uh, worship the Lord on Sunday and to give a tithe and to do these things. We need to do it because, right. listen, it's what God says for us to do. And so here the, the people uh, began, it was murmuring and then, and, and then, then said the, uh, the Lord in, in verse uh, verse 6, uh, he, again here he said, I may prove them whether they walk in my law or not, and it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it, it shall be twice as much as the gathered daily. And Moses and Aaron said unto all the children of Israel, At evening, then ye shall know that the Lord hath brought you out from the land of Egypt. Amen. And in the morning, then ye shall see the glory of the Lord, for that he heareth your murmuring against the Lord. And what are we that we murmur against us? What are, what are ye murmuring against us? And Moses said, be uh, Moses, when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat and in the morning bread to, to the fool for that the Lord heareth your murmuring which ye murmur against him and what are ye what are we your murmuring are not against us but against the Lord. Amen. And Moses spake unto Aaron, said unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he hath heard your murmuring. And it shall it come to pass, as Aaron spake unto the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked towards the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. Amen. There we go. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, I have heard the murmuring of the children of Israel. Speak unto them, saying, at, e at evening ye shall eat flesh, and in the morning ye shall fill, fill with bread, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to I show you something here. Uh, in another chapter, I wrote it, I, I wrote it down. Uh, in, I think it's in no... Uh, uh, but anyway, what it is, 
when he sent those quails, mm -hmm. he sent so many that they were so deep on top of one another and, all this, and so wide that they could not, no way, handle all of that, all of that mess. Right. And they, they stayed up, they stayed up day and, and day and day, cleaning up that, that meat and all. And listen, they still didn't love the Lord. They still right. didn't obey Moses exactly. after that, after that. And so here, I want, to, I want, I wanted to read that to you, but uh, I, can't, I thought I jotted it down somewhere. But anyway, uh, uh, real gone. Uh, okay, so now let me look stay in here. Uh, all the congregation of the children of Israel. All right. <clears throat> okay, here we go with Moses. And and in verse 17, and we see down about third, third verse. And the people thirsted there for water. And the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto this people? They be all most ready to kill me. The Lord said unto Moses, Go before the people and take with thee the elders of Israel and thy rod, wherewith thou smotest the river, Take in thy hand and go, and I will, behold, I will stand before thee upon the rock in the corb, and thou shalt smite the rock, here we go, what I say, and there shall come water out of it, and the people may drink, and Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. Now, Amen. we have never seen this happen as far as I know anything about anybody. But the thing of it is, we can see it mm -hmm. in God's Word. We can understand, we can understand that this thing happened mm -hmm. and how how good God was to those people. And when 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 all those uh, 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 quail come in and when Moses struck one, they they still murmured. And this is something this morning that we again, I, 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 I just can't get it out of my mind. We don't need to murmur. Amen. And so be patient with the, uh, uh, these things and uh, with, with, with what people does for you. And uh, and that I wanted to read that if I could have, but I, thought I, but I didn't. But anyway, but anyway, I want you to show you something here after all of these things happen to them in the Old Testament and you can you can read all kinds of things that went on during the the, uh, the time during the Old Testament but I want to go to you this morning in the book of, of uh, Hebrews and I want, I want you to see something here in Hebrews uh, 135 Let's see, no, it's 13 5. I'm sorry. 13 5. All right, here we go. 13 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content mm -hmm. with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Amen. And people, that's the most greatest thing that we can read. That's the most, that's the greatest thing that we can see God doing for us. And as he, as he smoked the rock, as he sent the quail, as he hit the water and all these things, that's a picture of him doing these things. Amen. And here he sent Jesus, he sent Jesus, his son, to continue and to tell uh, the the Gentiles all of this, and here is here is the here is the promise that he gave to them: "I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear 
what man shall do unto me. Amen. Remember them which have remember them which have the rule over you, who spoke, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith followed, consider the end of their conversation. Uh, and listen, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Amen. So when he made a promise, when he tells you something, when he told them something, it was as, it was as good as God. Because listen, God sent him Amen. as his uh, spokesman. And he gave him all the authority to say these things. And he gave him the authority to go to the cross of Calvary and to die for our sins and be resurrected and on the third on the third day be resurrected and so this morning uh, as we think upon these things and as we think about the uh, time drawing near because we we understand that the world is is, is getting wicked, wickeder and wickeder and so we need to we need to think upon uh, some of the things that we've read here I, like I said it ain't no earth shaking uh, less message, but the thing of it is, it's a reminder to you, just right. like the rainbow when you see it. If you if you if you if you just listen uh, uh, and not, I mean, think about this. Uh, it's a beautiful thing, and, mm -hmm. and and that's most of the time. It's oh, it's beautiful. But the thing of it is, what is behind that rainbow? Amen. What what kind of work? What kind of promise? And all this, it's a promise to you and me. It's a promise from God. And we, you know, the, 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 some of them say there is no God. Well, listen, he spoke the world into existence and he said all that he did was good. Listen, it's, it's turned 6,000 years, just kept on rotating all the planets and, uh, and the sun is not burnt out. The moon Amen. still gives its light. Listen, when you look up there and see those stars and that moon and that all of that sun and all that, you ought to realize that there is a God. There shouldn't Amen. be any doubt in nobody's mind. He's staring at God. But the, the course, the thing of it is, so many people are uh, not, not prepared like they should be. And so many people will never be prepared. Uh, I believe that with all my heart. There's going. To, there's there's people right now walking around that are not the chosen. Right. And, and and that's dangerous. But you that are here and that don't know the Lord and the forgiveness of sin, you need to find find out for sure uh, what what your condition is. Amen. And that you need to ask someone to pray for you. You need to ask someone to help you with the situation. Because listen, it's the most. It's the most. It's it's all. That's mm -hmm. all it is. I mean, that's why we're put here on this earth, and that's to go and 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 serve the Lord and be with Him in heaven. Amen. And so it's it's uh, that's that's my message uh, this morning, and I hope that. Uh, like I say, it, it's it's something that you need to think about. And all these things that we've read about here this morning it don't seem like that much. But listen, could you imagine seeing Jesus walk up and touch a man's brow and get up and walk off? Mm -hmm. Amen. So this morning, this morning we serve a God that is able to do anything that he wants to and he's got us in the, on his mind and he loves us and so we've got the we've got the world to lose in heaven the game amen so that's our message this morning hoping it's been a blessing to you and if it, if, if, uh, if you think about these things and i hope it won't be long for some of these things will, will come around and it'll make you remember again and uh, if you need to say this morning, I hope that the Holy Spirit will start working in your soul and, and, Amen. and uh, warning you of this because if he does, that's a sign this morning, I, I believe that you are one of God's children. And uh, But anyway, that's our lesson. Thank you so much. <laughs>